Hey kids, we're back again today to talk more about, you guessed it, gentleness. Now, before we get started, I have a question I want to start out by asking you. What is your most prized possession? Now, maybe your most prized possession is a phone or a tablet. Maybe it's your video game system. Maybe it's a special hat or a nice book you like to read. Or it could even be your pet plant. Maybe it's the old piece of pepperoni that you have hidden under your bed that your pants will never find. Maybe it's your stuffed animal that you love so much. Or maybe all this just sounds pretty strange and you don't really have a most prized possession. Whether you have one or not, all of us carry something in our life that we really, really like and we would never, ever want to get rid of. One of those things for me is my baseball collection. I love my baseball collection. I have so many baseballs that I enjoy. I have this cat baseball. I have this baseball from when we went out west and saw a bunch of mountains. I have my Disneyland baseball. I have all kinds of baseballs that I love. But none of these baseballs to me compare to my cat baseball. I was with my grandma and we were staying at her house. Well one day we got super bored and I'm sure you're probably getting bored at your house right now. So what we decided to do is we decided to go for a walk. And we went for a walk through this trailer park where my grandma knew some people there. Well while we were there we said hi and we waved to some people and we talked to some people. But there was one man who talked to me about baseball for a super long time. Time. And this man had shown me his baseball that he got from a double-A baseball team and said that it was his most prized possession because he never caught a ball at a baseball game before and this ball was in almost mint condition. Well, when we got dumped with our walk, we came back to my grandma's house and we had lunch. And about an hour after we came back, this old man had came back to my grandma's house to say to me how much he appreciated that I came and visited him. And he told me that he was sorry he didn't do it before, but he gave me his baseball that he loved so much. Now, you might say, well, that's a really cool thing, but would you die for your baseball? No, I wouldn't die for this. Now, I love it. I love it a whole lot, and I, I always want to keep it. But if you ask me if I would lay down my life for this baseball, mm, no, I probably wouldn't. Honestly, it's just a ball. It's just a thing. Just like every other thing that I have. My phone, my video game system, my stuffed animal, everything that I have. They're just things. They don't matter nearly as much as the people that are around me. But one thing I never even asked you about that is a prized possession or not for you is your family or maybe your animals. And that's why I didn't ask because they're not really possessions. They're people and they're living things that you can care about and show you affection back. Well, back in Bible times, there was an important person called the shepherd. And the shepherd watched over all the sheep to make sure that nothing bad happened to them. Now you had to have a good shepherd because sometimes bad shepherds would not watch over the sheep. They would not pay attention or if something dangerous happened to the sheep, they would run the other way. But Jesus tells us that he was a good shepherd. And a good shepherd was the kind of shepherd who would fight off anybody who would try to mess with the sheep. He would take out robbers or he would even battle bears or wolves who would try to come for the sheep. And even good shepherds would go and find the lost sheep who would walk away. Well, Jesus was such a good shepherd, he did that and even more. In John 10, 14, Jesus says this, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. Jesus goes on to talk about how he does have sheep, but he also has sheep who don't know him and who don't care about him because for whatever reason, they don't want to come to him or they don't want to be protected by him. And it's this kind of weird story that Jesus tells, but at the end of it, what he's really trying to say is he's trying to say that he loves us so much, that we are so prized to him, that we are so important to him, that he would go as far as to die for us. And this Easter, we're reminded of that. We're reminded that Jesus went up on the cross and he died for you and me 
for your parents, for your grandparents, for your aunts, your uncles, your friends at school, and everybody else in this world. Because that's how much Jesus loves us. He cares for us and he died for us. And when Jesus talks about the sheep that are in his pen and the sheep that are outside of his pen, one easy way to look at it is the people who go to church and the people who don't go to church. But at the end of the day, Jesus still loves and cares about the people who aren't in his church. To the people who don't go to church to worship him, who don't go to learn about him. He still loves them, he still cares for them. And all he wants is for them to come to him and to love him because his love is ready for them. You see, in times of trouble, a bad shepherd would leave his sheep, but a good shepherd would die for his sheep. And that's what makes Jesus a good shepherd. Jesus is gentle with people who accept him and people who don't accept him. At the end of the day, Jesus doesn't say, hey, those people who are over there who don't like me, go badmouth them, go say mean things to them, go be terrible to them. He doesn't say that. At the end of the day, the people who don't know Jesus, Jesus wants them to come to know him. And that's why he tells us, with every single person we meet, show them love, care for them, help them, support them, encourage them, do as many different things as you can to help them. Because at the end of the day, people know Jesus by knowing you. That's why it's so important that we're gentle with other people. Because Jesus is gentle with us, we want to be gentle with other people. Because people who don't know Jesus have never met him. But people like you and me who do know Jesus, we have met him. And we do care about him. And we do know that he cares about us. So since Jesus cares about us, we want to care for other people the way Jesus cares for us. Now you see, I might not die for my ball. I wouldn't go into a blazing fire to rescue it, or I wouldn't jump the fence into a lion cage to go grab it, or anything like that. I wouldn't risk my life for my ball, but I do care about it. But that's what makes us different from the prized possessions that we have in the way that Jesus looks about at us and Jesus cares about us. Jesus did die for us, and not only us, but for everyone. He died so that you can come to know him, he died so that your friends can come to know him, and he died for the people who aren't always nice and probably are sometimes mean so that they can come to know him so they don't do those things anymore. So here's my challenge to you this week. I want you to go find whatever it is that you love so much that is your most prized possession. Like we said, it could be your tablet, it could be your clothes, it could be your video game system, whatever it is. I know you can't write on everything, so what I want you to do is I want you to make a note and on it, I want you to write John 10, 14. And I want you to put a piece of paper on that note and stick it on your most prized possession. So that way, whenever you look at your most prized possession, whenever you see it, you can remember that, yeah, you do love that. But Jesus, he's a good shepherd. And he loves you even more. He loves you so much that he went to the cross for you. I hope you have a great week. Thank you so much for joining us. And I can't wait to see you again, whether at church or chapel, the daycare, wherever it is. Can't wait to see you again. Thanks for joining us.